to my channel my name is Amy and this is a diamond paint with me whip and chat um, today I'm going to share with you guys a little bit of the reasons kind of why I stepped back from uh, making so many diamond painting videos as far as whip and chats and stuff are concerned and um, I don't know, maybe chat a little bit more. I'm not I'm trying not to make this too long. I'm trying to stay in the 30 minute mark, maybe a little bit less because I do have a Zoom meeting in about an hour and I just don't like cutting it close. So, um, in case you are new here, uh, my name's Amy, I think I said that already. This is a craft channel. I, um, do mostly cross stitch and diamond painting. I'm the owner of Mystical Diamond Art, which is why you see so many uh, Mystical Diamond Art unboxings on this channel. And um, I do some beaded cross stitch, I sew, um, you know, those types of things. So let's get into it. I'm working on Paradise Cove, um, mainly out of convenience because I already have it out. And this is one of the paintings that sits under, um, on this table, I normally keep a quilt, like a fabric mat on top of it. And this, I keep, like, finished diamond paintings and stuff under it. You can see, oh no, what I do with them? I put them in a different spot for right now because I actually just moved my office around, but normally I keep them all under here. Uh, I don't have a picture. I was looking for the box. What did I do with the box? Did I get rid of it? Very well, may be the case. I might have gotten rid of the box. I'll try to remember to put a picture here of what Paradise Cove looks like. This is an old charting of Paradise Cove. It is quite small. It's only 40 by 55. I haven't restocked this yet because I'd like to rechart it into a larger piece because I just feel like this is too small for the level of detail that's in it. It's a very popular painting and you guys seem to have really liked the second charting that we did. The second charting is much better, except that it's still the same size. So it is what it is. I'm still working on the original one. Um, it's kind of a hot mess because you're so close and this is a bunch of confetti. So you can't see a lot of, um, the detail real good so I'm gonna kind of try to tilt you guys out and zoom you in a little more because I'm gonna be working um, on this I'm gonna have to move you guys down so you can see what I want you to see a little bit better and not so much of the joke that should work I am drinking coffee out of my boss lady cup today I don't think you guys can see because you're too oh yeah on the inside it says something to I mentioned this last time but I can't remember what it says I can never remember what it says all right, so let's get into it. Um, I think I'm using color number, yeah, number two. So, you're blurry, first of all. Hopefully you stay. Can you see where I'm painting at? No, you can't. Let's see. I always like to point, yeah, so I'm doing down here. So I might be a little, I'll just move you guys after. So, you guys might be surprised to see a diamond painting whip in chat. Um, it's not because I haven't been diamond painting. I have been. However, um, I used to just leave my diamond paintings out on the kitchen table and I would kind of like work on them whenever I sat at the table. Except things are like so busy right now that I haven't been leaving any diamond paintings out. Not only that, but we've also gained a pet since I used to work on my table and they just kind of touch everything and I don't like leaving them out on the table anymore. Not only that, but with a diamond painting, it's like, it's not very easy to store. Um, you have to have your drills, which are the beads in containers or bags or something. You can't leave anything open. Um, and it's just, a little difficult and so I only work on them in here now um, and you know it just it is what it is that's one of the reasons why I don't 
record as many. I'm gonna come up to the top here. If you can't see, I apologize because there's only a couple up here. Um, that's one of the reasons why I don't record as much. And then another of the reasons is because um, when I do get a chance to diamond paint, it's like 10 minutes here, 15 minutes there. And it's the same with stitching. I stitch way more than I film because a lot of the time I can only stitch in like little bursts and don't by the time I would be able to set it all up find the angle start recording you know put the camera in the tripod and all of that stuff I would have wasted all of my stitchy time or my painting time and so that's one of the reasons why I don't and I think that's most creators anyway we we do our craft more than we record I know some creators who only do their craft while they record but then they're also posting videos every single day um i was posting videos every single almost every single day at the beginning of the year and i loved posting the daily videos and i wish i could get back to posting daily videos i want to try getting back to that um but i don't know we'll see we'll see I have a class right now that is so time consuming and so, um, I'm drinking my coffee, workload heavy. It's so intensive um, that I like honestly have not had a chance to do anything that I want to do lately. And uh, the good thing about it though is that it is a mini course. And so that means that it's actually going to be over in a couple of weeks. I think October, I think the second week of October is going to be over. Thank God. I don't know what day October starts on, but I think it ends on the 14th or ish around there. And so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that happening because I am tired of this class. So tired of it it takes up so much of my time and this teacher is one of those teachers who like so when you submit an assignment she can leave comments on like the grade and you have to respond to her comments even if she just says like good job you have to say thank you or some other type of feedback and so um, she gave me a really low grade on this last one she gave me like a 79 and so I was looking at it, I was like, what the, f like, how did I get a 79? Like, this is impossible. Like, I worked so hard on this. And when I, I told her, I was like, I started going through the rubric because that's the first thing she says is check the rubric. You're not checking the feedback that I'm giving you. And I always check the damn feedback. And she gave me a freaking zero because she said I didn't turn it in on time because the rubric is like breaks down all of the different sections you can earn points in, right? Um, and so I pointed out to her, I was like, I turned it in early. Like, how the hell did I get to zero? So she changed the grade on that part and ended up giving me like a 80 something, which is better, but still like, it just, it's, it's rough. That's all, you know, I'm going to stop talking about that because it's just going to make me mad all over again. But, um, let me for another color that I can do in here that you guys can actually see. And um, this is also our old charting with the alphabet. We've since gotten rid of the alphabet for the most part. We do still use some letters, but um, we were just going like one through nine, A through whatever letter it ended on. We've stopped doing that because there's a lot of problem letters like O, Q, R, um, E, and F, you know, so we, we kind of stopped that. But anyway. So let's get into what you're dying to hear. Um, one of the biggest reasons why I stopped posting as many diamond painting videos. Um, one of the main reasons why I stopped posting diamond painting videos is because of the diamond painting community of itself. Um, I have tried to make like friends in the diamond painting community and a lot of the diamond painters who have channels just aren't that friendly. I'm not going to name any names, 
Um, there's plenty of diamond painters that I've had really great interactions with and didn't, you know, but that doesn't mean that we're friends, you know, like just because we're cordial with each other, I would say we're more like acquaintances than anything. And I think that's one of the problems in the diamond painting community is a lot of creators just don't want to work with other creators. Um, I don't know why it is what it is, you know, like I've had one collab here, I think on the channel. Um, I've also been a sponsor for Jennifer Roberts who, um, you know, I, again, we're cordial with each other, but I wouldn't say that we're more than that. Um, I've sponsored her DP year of the month and I honestly don't know if she's still doing that. I haven't watched as many of her videos as of late as I should have to, to be up to date on that. But, um, you know, uh, there's plenty of other YouTubers that I've interacted with and didn't have a negative experience with but then at the same time like it wasn't like we don't chit chat like hey how are you it's typically all business and so and I mean that's not a bad thing I'm not expecting like everybody to be my friend at the same time you know but it was like after it got to a point where it was like I was having that experience with like every diamond painter that I interacted with like, it got to a point where, like, I would reach out to a diamond painter, like, with a question or not even, like, hey, do you want to do a review? Um, and it would always turn into this weird, like, don't ask me for anything type of conversation. And it would never even be like that. It's kind of, I don't know. Um, I never felt like... Like they wanted anything to do with just chit chatting and so I kind of just stopped reaching out to diamond painters um, to interact with much less collab with you know still to this day like right now I am not really like friends with anybody in the diamond painting community um, again I'm very cordial with many creators but we don't have a friendship and I'm not saying that that matters but at the same time like when you're in a community like you want to be able to just chit chat and have that nice experience with a fellow creator and I just never got that and it kind of really pushed me away from trying to be such a heavy part of the diamond painting community and I know that that sounds really weird considering that I still own and operate Mystical Diamond Art which does really well for itself um but I find that you guys interact more when I'm posting like the back in stock videos versus I'm trying to see if you guys can see the section I want to paint um versus me doing like a diamond painting weapon job how far up can you see? Oh, you can see the whole thing. Okay. And so, I don't know. That's one of the reasons that's that's turned me away from it. Um, I've had plenty of negative experiences as well. Reaching out to creators. Not even, like, asking them if they wanted to receive a free canvas. I've reached out to several creators wanting to either collab or we work on the same painting and it didn't even have to be a mystical diamond art painting most of the time when I reached out to creators I never even mentioned receiving a painting from my company I specifically said you know maybe purchase the same paintings or similar paintings and um, work on them like that maybe we answer the same tags similar to the way I did it with Mindy I had so much fun doing Mindy's um, collab that we did. Um, and then more recently, it, honestly, I wouldn't say more recently because this has been going on since I've been in the diamond painting community, is all of the drama. And I particularly don't like 
the drama and the cattiness that a lot of creators seem to have. I don't like when I see... It's not that I don't like when I see them because I, most of the time I don't even watch them or even like waste my time. But I don't like videos where creators are calling out other creators. Um, and I will not... I'm not saying that I won't watch you after that, but it'll definitely change my outlook on how I feel watching your videos if you're making videos calling out other creators for the silliest things. Um, people are allowed to have disagreements. People are allowed to um, like agree to disagree. Not everybody has to share your opinion and that's one of the things that I noticed about the diamond painting community is that if you have a difference in opinion they don't like to hear that and like they just would rather call you out instead of accepting that you're not the same you don't have to like the same things you know it just I don't know I have a hard time with that and I've unsubscribed to a lot of channels in the past six months because of that um, I still watch a lot of people, but I don't comment anymore. Um, but I do still watch a lot of diamond painters still. I just choose not to comment because it's not that I don't feel like, like I don't have anything relevant to say. It's just that I don't want anybody to feel any kind of way about what my comment could be perceived as. Not that I have anything negative to say, but just with the way everybody is today, I just can't handle it. Um, recently, I've seen a handful of videos of people really like just complaining about everything and I honestly just don't like to watch those videos. I love to hear about people's lives, yeah. But once you start complaining about everything, and especially like about other creators and things like that, I just, I get really pushed away from wanting to do that thing. I still very much enjoy diamond painting. I will probably always diamond paint, but that doesn't mean that I'm gonna always share it with you guys, I guess I could say. Um, because of that. And, I don't know, I feel like I'm not making any sense at all to you guys. Uh, I recently watched a video of a, uh, another creator, um, talking smack about different career types and career choices, and that happened to be my career choice, um, because in... Um, another three months, I will be a licensed psychologist, um, or I'll be a, a counselor. And, you know, I, that was one of the careers that they talk shit about. And I just feel like their words, I don't know. I just, I feel like they're just not as open to other people like just not as accepting and I just don't feel like that's how people in general should be like everybody has a different opinion everybody has a different lifestyle a different way of life different cultures different backgrounds and I feel like a lot of people in the diamond painting community are just not accepting of that I'm not saying that it's necessarily a bad thing but to me it, it comes off as like you don't want anything to do with anybody else and like maybe you're too good to have those experiences with other people as well um I don't know uh I get a lot of negative comments on the channel but those negative comments don't even affect me to be honest you guys I really don't give a shit most of the comments come from my unboxing videos where people say that I'm taking too long to unbox um, an item. And I don't know like where that comes from. If, if I haven't unboxed an item the second I turn the camera on, it's because I have something to say about it. 
And what's funny is I'm getting a lot of comments on my older videos, especially like my Diamond Art Club videos where, yeah, you know what, they were longer, but I was also unboxing like five paintings. And so how do you expect me to unbox, unpackage, unwrap, roll out, and show five diamond paintings in 10 minutes? You know, that was another issue that I heard a creator recently talking about is how long people take to show diamond paintings in their videos. You know, and I just, I don't feel like that is right. And then at the same time, people are saying, my channel, my way. But if you have that mentality, like, why are you talking so much shit about what other creators do? Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. And it just does, does not make me feel like part of the community at all. Again, Mystical Diamond Art does very well. Um, everybody seems to particularly enjoy purchasing um, the images that I've brought to the website and, you know, the new images, the old images, the restocks, everything. Mystical Diamond Art is very well. Um, but as far as my videos are concerned, I just don't feel as accepted into the community. And it's not going to stop me necessarily from posting videos because obviously I still post one every now and then, but it stopped me from posting them as frequently as I used to. Um, for a good while there, I was doing like one stitch with me and one diamond painting with another uh, DP with me, both whip and chats once a week at minimum, you know. And so now I don't really do any whip and chats diamond painting, just mostly because of that, because this is all of the drama in the diamond painting community. Um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I find that. A lot of creators just aren't that friendly um, versus what they portray on their channel and you'll honestly you'll see that because those creators are the ones who never collab with anybody they don't interact in their comments they um, you know you never see another creator on their channel because they're not they don't want anybody else to come into um, their channel that also has competing content, I guess I should say. Another problem that I have is the, um, copyright issues that are going on. Um, a lot of people who diamond paint don't care where they get their paintings from. And I know cost is a huge driving force into where people get their diamond paintings from however if you're in large groups like um like crafters anonymous with mrs christian coffee and rachel ray i feel like you should know and be super familiar with diamond art club and know what images they offer and I would say like the vast majority of Diamond Art Club's images are all licensed. And so um, for them to still be purchasing like Mandy Manzano knockoffs off of AliExpress because they're cheaper and then still showing them in Facebook groups, like some people I get, they really just don't know because they start out searching diamond paintings and they start buying the, the cheap ones that you can get. You know, because I've done the same thing. I've, I've accidentally purchased licensed artwork before that I didn't know was licensed until I found out afterwards that it was a stolen image. Um, you know, but a lot of people have that mentality that, oh, well, um, it's cheaper, so I'm going to get it there. And I've also seen a lot of creators say, well... I know that they have a lot of licensed images on their website. I've brought that to their attention and they're working on it. But you're still giving them your money and you're still giving them a good review. So all customers are hearing 
is that oh such and such reviewed this company they're a good company and they're still gonna go and purchase the licensed images the illegally images legally licensed images they have on their website so my whole problem with that is the way to stop these people from stealing the artwork is to not purchase from the company at all until they remedy their mistakes and I just feel like I've heard a lot of creators say that it's not their problem that it's up to the artist to be responsible for um, people stealing their artwork and no it's not if an artist has to spend all day policing um, the internet for their work because it's being stolen they're not they wouldn't be an artist they wouldn't have time to create um and you wouldn't you wouldn't have the the artwork that you have because you're spending so much time canvassing the internet for people stealing your work that there'd be no new images coming out and it just doesn't make any sense and that was a big one for me too to have creators people who know better say oh well they sent me all these canvases to review uh i like them they're nice and they're of good quality it's poured glue it's this it's that the drills look good however you will see some licensed images on their website so just be careful do your research and they're working on removing those images no they're not they're not working on removing those images they're telling you that so you can still give them the good review and um, they're not going to worry about it. They don't have to worry about it because they're from another country. They have completely different policies and laws than we do that allows them to steal our artwork and get away with it. So in August, one of these companies reached out to me, asked me if um, I'd be willing to review some canvases for them. They told me to go onto their website and pick out as many canvases as I'd like and they would send them to me in exchange for a review. And so at first I was like, oh, okay. It's like, I can do that. It's like, I talk about Diamond Art Club all the time. I still purchase from Diamond Art Club. I show them on here. Like, you know, I don't have anything against supporting another diamond painting company. Um, so I went onto their website and the first thing I see when I get to the website is a licensed image. And at, at first I was like, okay, okay, it's just one. Like, I'm not gonna, let me keep searching. So I clicked to the next page again, immediately another licensed image. Um... At that point, I was already over it. I was already frustrated that they had the nerve to reach out to me, um, given my status as a you know diamond painting business owner. And it just really turned me off of supporting other companies and supporting other creators who still support those companies. So I sat on it. I didn't even respond to their emails after I saw the licensed images. So before recording this video, I went onto their website and they still have those licensed images up. And I have seen other large creators showcase this company on their channel and you guys the way to stop these companies from stealing artwork is to not support the company you guys say oh well i just won't buy that image if i know it's a licensed image then i just won't buy that image anymore and you know i commend you for taking the time that's needed to do research to find out if an image is licensed or not, but new people coming into diamond painting or 
people who can't afford companies like Diamond Art Club, the first thing on their mind isn't going to be, is this image stolen or not? They're going to say, oh, this image is $50 cheaper on this website, and I have to wait a little bit longer to get it, but I'm saving $50. That's what they're going to say. They're not going to say, oh, this is stolen, that's stolen, that's stolen, because they're not going to know first. Um, you know, like my mom, for example, she, first, she doesn't have a taste for a lot of the licensed images that are coming out, like Hannah Lynn and Mandy Manzano, like all the Diamond Art Club stuff. Um, she doesn't like a lot of that kind of thing, and so she's ordering from AliExpress, but she doesn't know how to reverse image search. She doesn't have a computer. She only has her phone. She's not very tech savvy. So she's not going to know how to do a reverse image search. And she's not going to be bothered by it either. You know. At some point. These diamond painting companies are going to say. Hey. You know. Our sales are dropping. You know. What is it? And. They're not dumb, you guys. They know that they are stealing images. I've talked to several of these larger companies. Even more so recently, I've talked to quite a few of them because um, being that I source diamond paintings, uh, recently I was looking at some other companies to see if they had different unlicensed work, a lot of them have computer generated work that they kind of draw up real quick because those Chinese people can do that. Um, and so I, I chatted with probably three other companies and when I asked one of them, because I saw some licensed work on their thing, I asked them like what protects my work you know, from you sharing it with other artists. And they said, well, we'll have to um, sign a contract if you don't want it to be featured in our catalog. Because if you send us an image to render, they automatically put that um, rendered image into their catalog as um, an option for other companies to purchase, whether it's a licensed image or not. And so I told them, you know, where did you get these other images at? Like, do you source, like, how do you source them? And they, uh, they, with full honesty, and I quote, said, we just get them from Google. And I told them, so do you know who the artists are? And they say, no, we just look up the picture, and if we like it, we take it. I immediately stopped messaging them back at that point. Didn't message them back, because I'm not interested in a company who can say something like that and be comfortable with it. And I think that that should go for creators as well. You guys, I'm going to say the way to stop this from happening is to not support the company at all that is stealing the artwork. It's a lot of work. Yes. But if we can all get together and stop purchasing from these companies who are stealing artwork, they're gonna take a hint and they're gonna know that shipping to America is coming to a halt because we don't agree with their practices and they will change. I've seen it happen. Um, I've seen companies on that have been reviewed on YouTube that, um, you know, chit chatting with other creators where they've told them, you know, I can't support um your company because you're you're currently sharing licensed artwork on there and it, you know if you want to be featured then you're gonna have to remove your licensed image and they do you know they do if they want that business and they do um they'll listen so that that's another big thing that was way too fucking long and i'm gonna have to start wrapping this up right now but those are like the main reasons why I stopped sharing so much content in the diamond painting community. I don't feel as welcome into the diamond painting community as a lot of people have. I feel like a lot of diamond painting creators are very territorial and just aren't as accepting of new creators 
as other people. Um, I don't necessarily feel that way in the stitching community, which is why I kind of started gravitating towards posting more stitching videos because I found that stitchers are more open. I don't know if it's because um, cross stitching is an older art. Um, and, you know, and it's kind of similar. If you guys have been on YouTube for a long time, I've been on YouTube not necessarily posting videos, but I've been watching YouTube for at least 10 years. And the same thing happens in the beauty community. People start taking jobs at other creators. They start getting mad because they're creating the same, if not, or like similar, if not the same content. And you guys, there's so many people in this world like you probably don't even have the same audience and you're getting mad because they're also posting a video with the same content. None of us would have any followers at all if there wasn't different types of people in the world. I don't like to watch certain creators that are big there's also smaller creators that I've come across that I don't particularly care for either, but they still have a lot of subscribers. There's a lot of people that have more subscribers than I do that I can't understand for the life of me why they're so popular. Um, you know, but people have different tastes. I don't like the same kind of paintings that everybody else likes. And the same thing for stitching, like I don't like a lot of stitching that a lot of other people like and that's okay because other people like it. Just because I don't like it doesn't mean that everybody else can't like it. And that's kind of like how I feel in the diamond painting community. I just don't feel welcome. And that's the bottom line. People are not wanting to play nice because you're posting similar content. And it just, I don't know. It doesn't, it baffles me, you know? I've also had experiences with other creators where they don't want anything to do with you unless you're sending them something for free. Um, it is what it is. I can't control it. That's also one of the reasons why I've stopped um, sending out promotion canvases because for a while there, I was sending out several promo canvases. And not just to large creators either. I was also sending them out to small creators. And by small creators, I mean people who have less than a thousand subscribers. I was sending out, the majority of my canvases were going to um, creators who had less than a thousand subscribers. And that was okay. I would say 90% of the time they posted their videos. And there was still that 10% where they didn't post a video, they just wanted the free canvas. Um, I've noticed since I've stopped sending the promo promo canvases out that so has, um, sorry guys, I'm not done painting because I'm drinking my coffee, but I've noticed that since I've also stopped sending out promotion and canvases that I also don't get any um, emails anymore asking for free canvases. So that was kind of weird. I wasn't expecting that. I figured that if Miss of the Diamond Art was still continuing to sell diamond paintings, that um, people would still reach out to ask. I was getting a lot of new creators that didn't even have any videos up asking for free canvases under the pretense that they would post a review video. And it's not that I didn't like want to send them one because I think that everybody should deserve a fair shot. But if you don't have any videos up and you're asking for a free canvas, it kind of made me uneasy because it was like, how many other companies have they reached out to asking for a free canvas and there's no videos on their channel? How do I know that they're just not going to get the free image and block me after that? You know, I don't know. It is what it is. And to me, like, if you support somebody, you're going to support them no matter what. And I've had plenty of instances where I've worked with a creator and the only time they chat with me is 
when I'm sending them a free image. They've never purchased from me, um, nothing. But if I reach out to them and say, hey, like I'd like to send you something, they're all for it. And they're all for featuring it on their channel. And I understand like some of the larger creators have way too many paintings and way too many things on their to-do list to be purchasing things like that I completely understand that like I get it that's why I'm not buying anything right now either diamond painting wise I've looked at other websites yes but I have way too many diamond paintings I've de-stashed eight I think of my diamond heart clubs and I still have like another eight um what am I working on a I think there's only one. Oh, there's a couple more um you know because I just know that even though I loved that image when I bought it and couldn't live without it when I bought it I know that I just I'm not going to make it a priority to work on it because it's not something I necessarily want on my wall I had a lot of Hamelin's or no um Mandy Manzano's Disney renditions of the princesses and I wish you guys I was just never going to do them I don't have that wall space the only wall that I have that would fit something like that is in my dining room and I don't want a wall of Disney princesses in my dining room okay let's be real so I decided to let them go you know I just can't win them all I guess and I'm so sorry if this video comes across as super bitchy and ranty it is ranty I'll give you that um, but I, I'm so not trying to be a bitch, but I've recently, I've had, um, a couple of creators reach out to me and say like, Hey, you know, what's going on? Like I, you know, just was checking out your channel and was looking for some diamond painting videos and noticed that you don't have as many up as you used to, you know, at the beginning of the year or last year at the end of last year. And you're right, I don't, you know, and I'm not saying that I owe anybody an explanation because I don't, um, but I just felt like it was, it should be voiced, you know, that these things do run through my mind and are present, you know, I got one, can you guys see it? No, I have one little spot over here that I'm going to fill in because I had a bunch of gaps down here at the bottom that I needed to fill in. I actually started filling those in before I started filming because my daughter was on a Zoom meeting. Oops, I still have one more gap right there. I'm trying to get like this whole bottom section done. My goal was to get this whole thing done today, which I think I'll be able to because I only have a couple of things to do. I do have a Zoom meeting right now, but um, it is what it is. <laughs> you know, I know you guys couldn't see that one, but that was off camera. It was only one. So I've got everything up until here. We're working on it. I think if I can work on just doing like certain sections a day, I can finish this in a week. This part is so confetti heavy. Let me zoom you guys out because I'm getting ready to wrap this up. Let me zoom you out a little bit so you can see. Am I zooming out? Yeah. Ooh, sorry. Right here. This part is so much confetti. Like, it's so bad. And then, can you see the top? You can start seeing, like, all the color blocking up here. So, I'm trying to just do this. I started working on the color blocking at the top and then um, stopped. So, you guys can see here the color blocking. And then I stopped because I knew that if I did all that first, I wasn't going to want to come back and finish this because it's so confetti heavy. But these are all, like, flowers, a sidewalk. Um, and the buildings and stuff and the trees in the background, super confetti. Um, but I'm getting it. I'm getting it. So I'm going to try to do like more of this before I finish up all it. Cause this whole bottom corner is done. That tree is almost all done and see all of that's done. This was all like a good amount of color blocking. Um, and so I have more confetti left than I do color blocking at this point, at this point. So I gotta get it done, guys. It's It'll never get done if I don't do it, right? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna let you guys go. This is way longer than I wanted it to be. And again, I super apologize if this is ranty or bitchy. I might even put that in the title. So if you don't want to hear it, then fucking don't.
all right? I'm not monetized, so I can cuss. Um, all right, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for listening.